This one is called the Scythe. It works on spin or static, but I would say it's much prettier on spin. It's one of those moves that when you do it on static, you don't get to see all the sides of it. And this one is gorgeous from all angles. So this one's gonna go from a pole sit, or you can go directly from a climb. Also, um, your contact points, let's talk about that. It's going to be the top of the thigh on your bottom leg. And I know bottom can be a little bit confusing because we're in a pole sit, but basically whichever way that you tilt your hips in your pole sit, that bottom leg, that's gonna end up being one of your primary contact points. And the goal is to have it as close up to your hip. It's probably not actually gonna touch, but you don't wanna have it way down here. You can make it work down there, but it's gonna be a lot more effort. So we wanna work smarter, not harder. The other contact point that we're going to end up having is that back of the armpit here. Okay, if you've ever done a leg hang and you reach your arm back and you kind of feel this like squeeze in that back part of your armpit, that is another primary contact point on this one. And of course, because that arm is there, you also end up with some side right here. Okay, and how much side and where exactly it hits is going to vary person to person, depending on your flexibility, proportions, all of those things. Okay, so you will feel something in here, but there isn't an exact spot where it should be. Okay, um, so primary ones are going to be that thigh here and then the top hand. So let's talk about that top hand. It can be any grip, okay? My personal preference and what I'm gonna be breaking down here is going to be a cup grip, which is all the fingers together and the thumb facing down. You can also do this in a true grip. You can also do it in a twisted grip. I will say the twisted grip definitely takes a lot more shoulder flexibility. For we, me with my little bitty short pull, the twisted grip also takes a little bit more room versus the cup grip I can have my hand closer to the pole. And for me, because I am a big fan of a cup grip, I don't have to hold on as tight with the cup grip. If I'm doing the true grip, I gotta really work my grip. If I'm doing the cup grip, really all I have to do is push my torso through and that hand actually gets pushed into the pole more. So for me personally, I find that it takes less effort, but it's a personal preference. So feel free to play around with that grip. So for this one, we're going to start in a pulse it. So prerequisite for this, you should 100% be comfortable with a pulse it. From here, there is a funky transition with this that takes us from the pole set to the scythe. And I would say it is deceptively challenging because you have to keep your contact points, okay? On that note, if this first transition of what's happening from the pole set to the scythe contact points on our thighs is new to you, I would strongly recommend not doing a twisted grip because if you're coming out of the move and the arm isn't a twisted grip, it can put a lot of wear and tear on the shoulder. So I would recommend if twisted grip is your goal, I'd recommend starting with a cup or a true the first few times until you sort out what's happening here, just to be gentle on your shoulders, okay? So we're gonna go from a pulse hip. You're gonna tilt your hips whichever direction you want, okay? Common question is if you're doing it on spin, do I spin into it, do I spin against it? It doesn't matter, okay? We all have a preference of which side that we go in our pulse sit. This one works both directions. My personal preference is spinning clockwise. I do this one tilting to the left. I do this one tilting to the right. Doesn't make a difference. It doesn't make the move harder or easier to get into or out of, okay? So we're gonna go to our pull set. We're going to tilt our hips. And then here's where the funky part happens. I'm gonna put it on static for a moment just so we can break this down. Is from our pull set, we're leaning. So we've got that contact point on the thigh here. The leg that is on the downside is going to have to come around to the other side, okay? And that's the part where, like I said, to be careful of your grip because it's in that transition for a lot of people where they start to lose that contact point. So really crucial when we start to take that leg around is that you keep your side tilt. If you go from a side tilt in a pulse it to a hips are nice and even and level, you're gonna find yourself most likely coming out of it because that contact point isn't so much here as up on the top of the thigh, okay? So let's look at that first part and our setup. You don't have to be high. You can take it a climb up. You can take it from a pole sit right on the ground. Personally, I like being even just a baby climb up, just so I don't worry about dragging my toes on the floor, okay? But of course, like all moves, this is a newer move to you. Start nice and low so that, you know, you're closer to the ground and safe. So we're gonna take it up to our starting pole sit position. From here, you're going to tilt your hips whichever direction you want to. Whichever direction your hips are tilting, that is going to be your top hand. So my hips are tilting to the right. That means my right hand is going to end up being my top hand. 
my inside arm is going to reach forward and swim back. So I feel that armpit hold. Now from here, this is where that hip transition happens. My top hip, which in this case is my left one, I have to keep that contact hold. Remember, I got to keep that tilt of my hips as I take my bottom leg around to the other side. Okay. So you see that transition of the bottom leg goes from having a contact point on the inner thigh here to coming around the pole to here, okay? And once again on this, where it contacts you is gonna be a little bit different for everyone. Size of your thigh, flexibility, height of your pole, like how close you are to the ground, all those things. But that little tiny switch of the legs is the most crucial part of getting into this, okay? And I think that is the part where a lot of people get stuck, or I should say, don't get stuck, they come out of it, okay? So when that leg is switching, nothing else should be moving. My arms stay, my top leg stays, the only thing moving is that bottom leg coming around to the other side, okay? Once that leg comes around, we're gonna end up grabbing that leg. It's gonna be opposite hand to leg, okay? So the leg that was the lower leg, the direction the hips are tilting, that leg comes around to join, the arm that is back is going to grab that leg. And then the same leg is going to extend back. And ideally, the traditional way that you'll see this scythe move done is both legs are in a bent. How bent is up to you, okay? Kind of like a pinwheel kind of shape, okay? So we've got our pull set, we've got our hips tilted, we've got our top hand, whichever grip you want. You've got your contact point. You've got your contact point here, really keeping that hip tilt. We're taking that inside leg, circling it around, now comes the style points, how you wanna go about grabbing this leg. For me personally, I find it smoother and I kinda of like the, ooh, I just switched transitions. I like to bend both legs at the same time and then it kinda of makes it a sneaky transition to grab that foot and then I extend them both out. They don't both fully extend, they're just extending to that like double helix kind of position, okay? So let's go to that point. We've got our pulse it with the tilt inside arm threads through keep that tilt as that bottom leg comes around bend both legs grab the bottom one and extend back to come out you can go back to your pulse it okay so that exit everything on the upper torso stays the same but now the legs were right here you let go of that foot it circles back around your back into your pulse set, okay? There are, of course, some other fun exit transitions from this. As you'll see in the little demo combo at the end of this tutorial, there's a really fun thread through that takes you through to a ballerina, but focus on getting this move first and exiting safely and smoothly before you start adding all the fancy stuff, okay? So, little recap. This is the scythe. Really important is keeping that hip tilt, which means really engaging those obliques. You can go whatever grip you want, but, Make sure you have what's going on with your legs. You're not sliding out of it in a twisted grip before you go to it because that is a little more wear and tear on the shoulder. We're going to be grabbing opposite arm to leg. And then once you're in the shape, it comes down to how you want to stylize. If you want your legs super bent, if you want your legs super straight, I find for this one of the things that increases the tension and helps lock me into this move is once I do go into the helix and I grab this leg, I really think of kicking my foot into my arm. And in doing that, it increases this contact point and this contact point here, and it helps lock me in. Okay, something to keep in mind if you've been watching a few of my tutorials, you've probably heard me say this and other things is when things get scary in pole and in life, we tend to want to do this. Okay, but in a lot of pole moves, when we do that, we lose our contact points and we fall out of the move. So you're going to have to fight your instinct to on that transition go, oh gosh, I hope it works, or oh, I might fall, you are going to. But instead, really think of keeping your upper back open, this arm extended, and your head and your chin up. That is gonna help lock you in that much more, because as soon as you curl, you lose this, you lose this, you lose this, it's all coming down. So this one is the scythe. Play around with it, have some fun with it, put it together in a combo of your choosing. Those of you that are in my online training program are going to find a complete tutorial on the full combo that's going to be coming at the end. So let me know how it goes. Have some fun. Mm -hmm.